this time we're going into another panel session where we're talking about how to manage your money as female. So, Damlela, I want to find out from you, as a woman, there's so many um, responsibilities that we have. How do we draw the line for meeting all our basic needs and responsibilities and then saving for the rainy day? I think the... <clears throat> I think the I think the number one thing is the values of the individual, right? Mm -hmm. um, if number one, discipline, I would say discipline is the bedrock of okay. drawing the line, right? And I think that delaying gratification as well um, is something that's also important. Um, and you know, a couple of other things. So like I mentioned earlier that you know we women sometimes you know we try to put on a facade for other people just so that maybe we can look more prestigious or that the other you know all of those ingredients put them in the same bucket buckets those are the things that help us um that can deter us from not joining the line um but if you're disciplined um you know how to say no you have you have a budget you can plan you know what your goal is and you know how to get there and you put a budget around you know your personal finance or your business finance and you're disciplined enough to follow it and then you know how to delay gratification. You know, when you see um, somebody, your colleague or someone around you has already maybe bought um, a gold wristwatch, for example, and you know how to say that, no, I don't need this now. You know, maybe in two or three years time, I would get it. That is a good, you know, attribute to also have that will help you draw the line because day in, day out, um, there are so many distractions um, and there's still, responsibilities, responsibilities from, you know, managing a business, managing your family, both extended or nuclear family or friends and families that you need to support or help. So, you know, just having, um, you know, the discipline around all of these things um, would help, you know, an individual try, you know, to, to, to draw the line and help you stay financially, you know, healthy. That, that, that's what I would say. Okay. Um, to look at, do you have a question before I carry on? Yeah, okay, great. Um, so I just also wanted to find out from you. Um, so here you are. This discipline that you talk about, I, I don't know. I, it's not everyone that you know has it or can even stick to it. So what are the things that women? What are the habits that women should have from an early age? From somebody's probably even, you know watching us now. She's already in her. Uh, you know, in her forties, and she's thinking, "Look, I've spent, I've made so many mistakes in the past. I've spent money. I've done all the fudge there is. What are the habits?" she needs to start imbibing now to save for her future and for her children's future. Okay, I think it starts from what you want, right? Um, very early on, I realized that not a lot of people want a lot of things, and it's okay, right? So let's start, what's your vision? What do you, what do you want to become in life? Um, when, I, um, start, when I was leaving secondary school, going to university, and I was really good at maths, and great at chemistry, my parents said, oh, recipe for chemical engineering. So the, the um, goal then was just to work in an oil and gas company, you know, get married and live happily ever after. And I attended um, a program, I always say this because, you know, that's the foundation of my entrepreneurial story, um, DESTA uh, Leadership um, DLA, right? And um, that was the first time I heard something about, you know, pass your goal, your mission. That was the first time at age 19 I retrospected about that I'm only here for a, a, a particular time. You're not, you're not going to get second chance. You're not going to come here three other times. You're here for a period. And, and as a day goes by, you're already getting older. Like you, like you can't maximum 100 years, or maybe let's even say 200 years. You're still going to still live this earth, right? Yeah. That gave me some sense of awareness that I had to take, you know, um, control of my life before, you know, it gets too late. And because, you know, I grew up amongst older people, right? I had. Right now, I, had, I have a stepbrother that is 50-something years old, 40-something years old. My sisters, my close sisters are 50-something years old. My parents are 70-something years old. So I could see, I, I learned from their own mistakes. And I saw that, okay, if I go this path, if I go this path, this might be um, a better path for me. If I do this, this might be a better thing for me. So I decided, the personal, I don't think anybody can teach anybody how to discipline. It's based on what you want and as an individual. 
Do you want to be successful? Okay, how successful? How big? What do you want? Do you just want to have you know, a small house and a family? You don't want to have a business? That's fine. But if you want something great for your life, you want to live a legacy, if you want to you know, build wealth, if you want to be able to help a generation, if you want to make impact, if you want to help people, then you need to be disciplined. You know, that, you know, there's a season and time for everything. You know, there's time for planting, there's time for harvest, there's time for watering, there's time for tilling the ground. When you understand those seasons, that, if, that just helps without anybody preaching to you or telling you or coaching you or reminding you. Whenever you even find yourself, you know, not derailing, you come back again because you remember your goal and you remember what you want to achieve. So that's how I'm able to, you know, imbibe that discipline and imbibe, you know, um, um, yeah, that's, you know, um, value. Thank you very much, Damlola. Um, now that we talk about this, but I want to reach out to Shola um, Akikoli. Shola, are you there with us? I'm here for me. Okay, fantastic. I wanted to ask you a question, two questions actually, but the first one is about, you know, uh, we just talked about discipline and even though Dami says that, you know, nobody can really teach you about that, you know, as an adult. But, you know, you're a parent, um, you're a parent and you men talked about how you started being an entrepreneur from when you were eight years old. What are the things that even as mothers, as parents, do we begin to imbibe and consciously teach our children? It'd be nice for you to, if you could point out maybe like three or four tips, because you're a mother now and you also learn from your mother. What are the things that we can begin to teach our children consciously so that they begin to learn about money. Um, I like when Sh um, Shola Adishaki said money is a servant and we need to tell it how to go. But how do we begin to consciously as parents, seeing the things that we have learned from our own parents, whether good or bad, and then begin to teach our own children? Yeah, sure. Um, firstly, I'm sure that we all hear about the you know, piggy bank thing. You know, get them a piggy bank. Them, and it's quite good, right? It's, it's, it's basic. But most importantly, it's about mindset. I think Damola just question just mentioned that that it was at 19 that she now had to be retrospective and then question why is she here? What does she? And the truth is that you know not everybody gets that light bulb moment that early. You might say 19 is late, but 19 is quite you know still early for a lot of people. Some people don't get it until 40. I you know um um um. Of course, harvest did with, 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 with uh, uh, an inclusive fintech for women. So I we have the privilege of working with women across different ages. And I see people who say that, ah, I wish I was like this. I wish I had done a lot of things. So basically, we owe it to our children, you know, or to young people around us to help them reorientate their mindsets. And I'll tell you an example. My son is eight. He likes gaming a lot. And um, there's this particular group blocks that, you know, a lot of people his age are really about. And he's always, you know, glued to his group blocks. They get their tabs on weekends. And at a point, he started telling me that he wants Robux. So Robux is the currency that they use on Roblox to maybe to buy things and then you go to the next level or to buy some. Um, you know how games are usually designed, right? And he kept telling me, and I said, dude, first, you're broke. Then, <laughs> secondly, you know, have you considered that when we buy this thing, somebody's getting rich somewhere? So that way, and, and he said, that's true, mommy. So that means I can build a game too. And then people buy, I said, exactly. And guess what? Right now, you know, he's, he was on scratch. Then that's, you know, it's it, it sped up his um, rate of assimilating. And we got him another person. And now he's saying that he wants to be an ethical hacker. Like the guy is really, really ginger. He wants to learn. So that way we've been able to convert, you know, his mindset from a consumer mindset to a producer mindset, right? So that is critical and it is key in young ones. I spoke about, you know, all of this in my book as well. You know, you you help them from a miscentric thing. Shala mentioned earlier, right? Um, I don't know. I'd always been someone who, you know, I believe in collaborations. I believe in, you know, cooperating to do it. It doesn't mean, I believe that this guy, I believe that as a Nigerian, we are all lucky to be Nigerians. Over 200 million people, come on. You have like <laughs> 10 countries in one. So there's enough space for everyone. And so we should encourage this in our children to, from being me-centric to being we-centric, you know, and that way they are able to collaborate with people. So it's more, you know, usually about mindset. And then we can now go to, okay, uh, you have a piggy bank, you're keeping money there. And, um, you know, we are investing that money 
on your behalf. So it's usually about mindset. And then another thing is that, um, of course, we know that children, they are very impressive. They are very impressionable, right? So whatever you do, I cannot tell my son now that uh, you should do this. And then, you know, um, he sees that I'm building. You know, there was this day I, I did this. Um, so there was a social media thing. I said I, I wanted to run with them. And he said that, I said, oh, that I'm putting in for a job. He said, oh, mommy, boy, you are a CEO at Harvest. You are country director. We mean, take, is this job going to be a CEO? Because it's got to be CEO. Do you understand? So he knows already um, um, that it's important, you know, to, to build. He knows already that he's only when you are able to. Because, again, you know, Dan Lala said something. And I think I should put this out, especially for... Um, um, relationships or marriages typically opposites attract and we've had cases where people will say oh um a man will say my 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 um, my wife isn't entrepreneurial or my wife isn't really audacious with her goals or the woman will say is my man that isn't audacious with you know and the truth is most of the time you have to sit i know you've not asked me this but i know that it'd be good for people out there because again the children see this it's important to sit with your partners before, during, after, wherever, to actually extract what they want to be. And like Daniela said, some people just want a, 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 a decent three-bedroom, okay, maybe duplex max, you know, is they don't want to travel every time. They, no, they are not interested in all of that. And I think that it would also be unfair to now oyster or, you know, put, you know, your own aspirations upon them. Right, so especially in places where families are blended. So, um, um, again, it's just important to ensure that the children have the right mindset towards money. Right, um, earlier on in life, like I said, financial literacy or finance, financial awareness is unfortunately is the place where a lot of people get certified, get the certificate that is money without getting the right education. So it's better that we speed them up on the right financial education before they start getting certified, at least they start getting access to money. Thank you very much, Shala. So um, just before um, I let you go, let's talk about women in the nine to five. How do women, not just women nine to five, because how do women begin to negotiate better salaries and better benefits for themselves? Because you know, research has been done. Many women earn lesser than their colleagues, even when sometimes they even get to do more work than their colleagues. So how do they begin to get this negotiation skill? And the second question, so you can answer it together, is the fact um, for women in nine to five, how do we, you know, begin to manage? And I say we because I'm also in that, you know, you know, line. How do we begin to manage our funds and also ensure that we save um, as well? Save and invest. Okay. Yeah, save and then start and then save to invest. Yes. Um, you know, there is really no way, and I always say this, that you talk about the economic gender gap without talking about the many, you know, gaps um, that affect women. As you've rightly said, income inequality is a thing, but it's the symptom of so many inequality that stems right from um, um, children out of school. My husband is in, you know, the development sector. And they deal with children out of school. And the children out of school is like a gender issue because most of the time we find more girls out of school than boys. And that became even more serious after COVID because they had to let the girls stay home, you know, to look after, to, to contribute on the farms, to look after their younger siblings, to fetch water and all of that. Even water um, 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 and hygiene issues, usually the period poverty is a thing. So we look at all of this and then it reduces the numbers of girls in school and then when it comes to okay women ladies getting into career um you go on maternity leave i went on maternity leave twice and i tell you that the two times i had to resume i cried i legit like cried not internal Aww. cry i was crying the second time i was so so distraught i ran into a car right there at Unicom. the guy just by then the guy saw me said you yeah, just give me back to work my daughter is just so 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 weeks and all of that and so there are so many policies that affect the woman and um, there are so many um, biases and assumptions too, you know, um, that so you go in, by the time you start rolling around with your tummy, someone just perceives that, you know what, you, you are just, let's, just, let's just leave her. 
you know, she, you are you are already um, um, giving below average of what you're meant to give. You know, so many of those things. And I think Bojola had mentioned that someone went on maternity leave seven times or so. I'm sure that maybe it took the grace of God for her to still, you know, have a career or retire successfully from one. So with all of this, income inequality is a thing. But guess what? There's something we say at Harvest, and it's an annual event we have. We featured Shola last year. We we're so grateful. A lot of women, and it's called Valley Up, because we've realized that there is certainly no way you can. It's not a gender issue. You've just got to. There's some people say, "Oh, are you now encouraging women to, you know, um, be more aggressive?" I said, "No. The, the 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 level playing field is not level, right? No matter what. So you just have to, you know, um, maybe the best way to analyze that is like, you know, part and what do you." Pad so that the, it's the level playing field is by padding upon a lot of value. That's no way, no matter what, even when they look at you, every time you know they look at you, it, 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 it's a pretty face. And then it's oh, a pretty face. Okay, maybe she deserves a place in the room because it's a pretty face. Oh, she can speak well, maybe because, but well, by the time you open your mouth and by the time they see the amount of value in your head, in your soul, in your heart, you know. It is not, it is it, nobody, nobody, even if they say they don't like your face, they'll say, you know what, I didn't like her guts, I don't like her face, but guess what? She's full of value. And that answers the question. You cannot just wake up one morning and say, you know what, I want to negotiate my salary. Trust me, I have lost a job because I got married. I had just a, you know, cute wedding. I didn't invite people. I went to leave. I went back. The next thing they were asking me to leave, you know, it was years later that I realized that they thought I was pregnant and they felt like I couldn't bring enough to that system again. So what I'm saying is that in most cases, anyways, you are so disadvantaged. But if you value up so well, right, there's there's no way that, you know, you would, you would um, ask and they, they wouldn't give. Because trust me, as an employer, there are some people that if they leave, you know, um, um, their roles or they leave the organization to their new oh. That is, we lost something. Do you understand? And there are some people that they leave, you won't even shake your body, like we say in Niger Palan. So my question is, which in which of in which of these um, 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 roles do you want to belong? Essentially, for females, you know, to be able to negotiate really well, essentially, you have to value up. And aside from valuing up, a lot of us will value up, value the value, but then there's no confidence to, you know, ask or make the request. So, you know, confidence is thing. Once you've done, you're sure that you've done all you're meant to do, you are contributing so much. Um, there's someone of the confidence, right? And, you know, go for it. I sit as an employer now and I see men, I see women come for um, 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 interviews. And trust me, most of the men who are less qualified come boldly, you know, ask, make a huge ask and all of that. And I see women sit in that same interview chair and cower and they are unsure, and then when they do, they ask, do you understand? So I, I've seen this from both perspectives of being an employee or an employer. So we certainly need to, you know, um, um, reinforce more confidence in us. I think the question and the value of, the second question you had asked is, you know, how do we save and then towards investment? Firstly, because I have seen this work, even for me, automate your savings. Um, as we said, um, um, you know, money usually it doesn't have its mind of its own. And black tax, as evidence, I think it was Damlala that mentioned, someone asked for, you know, is a thing, is on all of us. Pink tax, as I say, affects a lot of us women, right? There was, there's this joke going around now that on Instagram, you just see a dress that you know that if you make this dress, maybe everything would be like 15,000. But they just say, oh, this is Omola, your dress, or this is on a JFA dress, and then it is suddenly 40,000. Is it the name we are paying for? Do you understand? <laughs> you know, in the sub, in the sub, let's see, that is some part of pink tax that, you know, this is a a, a, a um, shaving stick, for instance, is black. Another one is purple or, you know, some nice color. And then it's just a space. And I like, it's the same function that it does. And there's another one that I made up. I said, is that that, that tax, right? And that is... Um, the one that you know, essentially, especially for first females, for first first female daughters in most families, at times it's not essentially the person. Maybe you're just responsible or you're empathic, and then everything just comes on your shoulder. Oh, mommy is ill. Ah, talk to Damilola. Oh, grandma swallow result is Damilola. Hey, this is this is a shola. Oh, this uh, person is ailing. Just drive him straight to this person's house. Do you understand? So you have to be really, really aware of this, and that is 
in that awareness, automate your savings. Pay yourself first. Pay your future first. Otherwise, there is no amount of money. We've seen, you know, some organizations, you know, um, and for, interestingly, I still sat with a VC, you know, um, 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 manager, I think about two weeks ago, and he said again that the tr most thriving um, 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 companies in their portfolio are the female-led ones. And he said, but the problem I have with you people is that you don't talk you know, um, um, as much about what you do like the men. Do you understand? So what that means is that, you know, you should, women are better managers. Forget whatever anybody has said there. You should get a copy of my book and read. You sign up on Harvest. We have these conversations there. Women are better managers. As a matter of fact, you know, Africa itself was matriarchal in the pre-colonial pre days. So essentially, you have to automate your savings because that way you have paid yourself. It still happens to me. I just see my balance. And you know, there are times that your balance just reduces and you're wondering, and I'm like, oh, what happened, what happened? And then, oh, I didn't get the notification from Harvest. And then I realized, and you know the number of times that that savings towards party. So that's how you can save successfully, helps towards saving successfully towards your goals. And then you save to invest. Invest, Um, I still... You know, there are different schools that say, oh, maybe stocks, maybe not. But I always say that stocks, you know, especially when you are younger, is really good, especially for the long term. There's this rule about stocks that, okay, for instance, when you're 20, you should have like, and, you know, don't quote me, still talk to your financial advisors, that when you're 20, you know, you should have like 80% of your um, um, investments in stocks. When you are 40, you should have about 60%. So some, you know, like an 100% thing like that. So that means that if you are 35 now, you want to have like 65. Or, but again, and there, there are so many um, digital fintech apps now that enable you to invest in Nigerian stocks, in, you know, foreign stocks. You are spoiled for choice. Nobody has an excuse these days. And you can also invest in fixed incomes too, right? Um, the uh, um, safest C bills, you know, FGM bonds and all of that, mutual funds, and there are just so many options. There's impact investment such that we, um, um one of the ones we offer on Harvest, which is peer to peer lending, you sure. lend to well, women like you yourself. Me. Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. I, I, I can hear you all the time, actually. I need to interrupt you because of time. We're running out of time. And so okay, we still all have right. One more you me, I'll continue. Yes, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry, because um, uh, we have to wrap up this session very quickly. And I, um, I have one question for Shola Adeshaki before we wrap up this session. Um, Shola, um, I just wanted to, Shola Adeshaki, I just wanted to find out from you, what are the, I know there are many financial skills that women should have, but can you just mention the three top financial skills women should have and how do we acquire them? All right, thank you. I would uh, answer that question with an acronym. Okay. okay. And I call it CREST. C R E S T. So I'm going to add two to the to the three. Now the first thing, yeah, in no particular particular order, well, by the order of the acronym, is collaborative skills. So I'll give a very practical example. Um, by profession, I am a chartered accountant, but by passion, I'm a personal finance coach, and I call myself the accountant, the, the global accountant, because I've got my accounting qualifications from three continents. I'm a fellow of ICANN, fellow of ACCA. I have a CPA from Canada and all of those things. But these days, I don't practice accounting as much as I do personal financial literacy and whatnot. But don't forget, I still pay my subscriptions. I'm still an accountant. I still do training. And many people will say, ah, no, we want you to do our books. I'm like, well, I like accounting, but I'm not as passionate as I used to be. So I sort of created an organization or created a partnership with a friend who is an accounting enthusiast. So we work together. I get the jobs. I bring in the leads. She does a technical beat with two other people that we employed. And we share the money. Do you see? That's collaboration. So I literally do not even see some of those clients. I don't know what is happening, but because I know that She's very solid. She knows her onions. And we make money. So I think for women, we need those collaborative skills. That's number one. Number two, risk management skills. Uh, I was glad when Shalape was talking about investments. We all know how the investment terrain has been in Nigeria and generally around the world in the last one or two years. You know, just, I mean, like two weeks ago, they were talking about the Silicon Valley Bank. And I was just looking at it. 
And all of a sudden, I realized that indirectly, we have funds in companies that we angel invested in. So risk management has got to be one skill that women must have. Before I put my money in this investment, what are the risks? How do I mitigate yes. my risks? When I teach financial risks in financial literacy, I talk about four types of risks, income risk, expense risk, asset risks, and liability risks. That's a whole topic by itself. So women must, you know, Learn to ask the right questions. What are the risks involved? Don't just say they said I should bring 300,000 and they will invest it in three, in 30 days, it will become 900,000. Learn to ask those questions. Now, the next skill is earning skill. And it's important. Remember when I was talking earlier and I'm like, you are a function of what you earn. Mm -hmm. Your ability to build wealth is a function of what you make. You can't, if you don't make money, you can't build wealth. You can't meet your family's needs. So these days I teach people, hey, look at it. How can I monetize my skills? As an employee, can I add my skills to what I currently do? Can I be a business owner? Can I be an investor? So you must, you must sharpen those earning skills. The next skill, set of skills, the two extra, saving and investment skills have become important. Again, these are not the days when you say there's one investment somewhere. You just put your money there. Mm. You must learn to invest based on your income. You must learn to invest in different asset classes. You must learn to save and know when to move money from your savings into your investment. And of course, the final skill is technology skills. My, my, my dad passed two years ago, passed on two years ago, at 80, 80, yes. And he was on all social media platforms. Oh, wow. The day I saw him following me on Instagram, <laughs> I was like, what, sir, what are you looking for, Gonkono? <laughs> You're on Instagram, you're on Facebook. I will post something, you'll be the one to come and say, ah, no, it's not like that. And he said something that never left me. Mm. He said, your generation is blessed to have the plethora of so all of true. these things. And mm -hmm. I'm glad to still be alive, so I would use it. I still see women who say, no, I, just, I, I, I don't understand. I cannot even understand that app. You need technology skills to be, because that is the future. That is where the money is. So don't forget crest skills, collaboration, risk management, earning skills, saving and investment skills, and um, technology skills. I hope that helps. Yes, it does. It does. Fantastic. I really, I really love it. Crest, collaborative skills, learning how to take risks, earning skills, um, savings and investing and technology skills. Thank you so much, Shala. <laughs>